Let me bang you. I do let you bang. Hey, let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let you bang. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Greetings, Marys and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? Hey, welcome to the Brandon MMA Roasted podcast. Me, I'm here with Bill Dawes. We got a great show today. We got John Dotson, who's got a big fight coming up. He just had a car. He was in a horrible car accident, um, but him and his family actually. Uh, uh, and no, I guess uh, is it too soon to say Matchbox cars? But um, he's doing much better now. Uh, super happy for him. Uh, is his family okay? Family's okay. Everyone's okay. Uh, God bless, because I love John Dodson, um, and uh, he's a good friend. Uh, and he's a good friend of the show. So uh, start over. Is, is, that, is it too much to Matchbox cars? No, because he's okay, right? Like I, I'm. I, mean, I think. It- it's okay, and his family's okay, then it's fine. I'm, I'm always editing in my head. It's the, this is like the worst time to be a comedian. Just constantly like pressing edit. It's like, the, how much be funny if I have to constantly edit? Like, edit, 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 edit. And then, and then I'm like, soundbite. Is this going to be taken out of context? Or Adam said yeah. this, Adam said that. And then I got to be important enough to even fucking have people care, you know? So anyway, <laughs> you have an audition? What's going on with you? Yeah, exactly. Nice. What are you auditioning for? I got like, uh, yeah, as, a, as a white man, I get to be a Nazi, uh, a, a, a cop, or some sort of, every once in a while, you get to have like a, a, a CEO nerd who's well, a piece a of shit. Actor, man. I mean, you're so on, that's like, what this was. You're on Broadway. Uh, you're, I mean, you're a great, great actor. Um, people don't realize that. You, you work all the time. Your resume is just like work, 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 work. Um, so that's, that's good. A lot of people in Hollywood do not work. All the time. It sure doesn't feel like I work all the time. It doesn't, it doesn't, right? I mean, because you do it and then, uh, I actually, I'm not going to say what show cause I had to sign an NDA, but I got my first like legit, legit acting part, uh, next Nice. Week. Yeah. 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 I'm super excited. Whoa. Yeah. Do an NDA for it. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, I'm just so like, I, it's just, you know, I spent more money on acting lessons. I could have went to like, you know, Med school six times already. So I could have went to no. law school, med or, or school. Or just even just taping an audition, you know what I mean? Ugh. That costs like 40, 50, 60 bucks to get an audition taped. I know. They want yeah. to do it at home. And the problem with the, like now everyone wants, because of COVID, everyone's like filming at home, which is great yeah. because you don't have to leave the house. And you don't have those jitters. I don't have to like run late and show up. And then you're in a room full of like nine guys that look like you who are all far more successful. Yeah. And then they walk into the room and the casting person's like, hey, how's the wife and the kids? And they're just, you know, <laughs> each other off. And, and, you oh, walk in, that. and they're like, so uh, any questions? Um, so, and then, and then, as you're doing it, you're looking over to see what they're thinking, and then they're like looking down at your resume and looking it over, and you're just like, "Oh, I'm fucking, I'm out, God. I'm out." And, you know, I, my my friend Jason Andors had one that went so bad he asked for his headshot back afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so because of COVID, you don't have to do all that. So you could take like seven thousand takes to make it the right one. The problem yeah. is, look at everyone else. Exactly. Uh, That's, so now, so you have garbage actors who spend four days making an audition tape. Yeah. And it looks like they can act because they spent all this time memorizing and shit. Right. A hundred percent. So it's like, I mean, I guess it's bad. I mean, I'd rather do it 700 times to get the right one to do it once and have to worry because I don't have my anxiety factor. At the same yeah. time, it's like hard if because I don't have a studio at home. I don't have a green screen or a white screen and a camera. So I got to drive an hour to my acting coach and pay her and then have her do it. And it's the whole thing, you know, and then find a babysitter and this and that. It's a whole fucking thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is not about acting. This is about MMA. So, but speaking yeah. of which, well, one, one more thing though. So I was going to, um, the dime bars open again and I, and my daughter's like, daddy, how come, you know, don't, I want to come, I want to come. So I'm like, all right. Yeah. I, I'm like, my wife had like a meeting she had to go to. So we all drive down to the dime bar and there's like, you know, 12 comics, 13 comics. And then I gave her my, so phone. you brought her to the show. What time was it? Eight o'clock? Eight o'clock. Show. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then she started lighting people. I gave her my phone to light people, 
So all the comics were like, okay, Violet, am I going over? You know, they all have like a joke about it. Like, she's like, daddy, wrap it up. Or daddy, this guy is terrible. But she, she, thought, it was the, she thought it was the funniest thing. It gave her like some kind of power. But then she wanted to light everyone right away. Like everyone's doing 30 seconds and she's holding up the light, which I, in her defense, they probably should have got the light in 30 seconds. <laughs> but then, then it was my time to go on stage and she wanted to go on with me. You know, yeah. and, uh, and my wife wasn't having that because, you know, I mean, I had jokes to work out. I'm doing another comedy special uh, with a bunch of fighters now. It's me, Chael Sonnen, Henry Cejudo, and Dean Thomas are all doing a special. That's uh, freaking awesome. Meanwhile, are you writing jokes for these guys as well? Uh, if they ask me to. I, I, yeah. I, I'm not so far. Um, yeah. I, th I think Henry wants to go over some stuff, you know. I'm a hundred, I am writing for someone else, a huge A-list fighter who's doing a show, and I'm helping him with that. But I'm, uh, but that's, but he, I mean, it's all his stuff. It's not like I'm writing. It's not yeah. like people think when you're writing for someone, you write a bunch of jokes, you go, here you go. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. not usually how I write. Yeah. It's me sitting down with somebody, they're telling me a story that the day of their yeah. stuff, and I'm just saying, oh, here's a, you could punch it up here, over there, you know? Yeah. Because that's what we, we do. We just look for the jokes. Yeah. We look for the right turns and prizes. I mean, I think there stories very about being comics. Great. I mean, you have to have an extreme kind of voice where you could even have someone just come up with like, here's some jokes for you. You know, like that's like, yeah. uh, I mean, maybe like a danger field probably could have done that. But I think he was a, he was a great joke writer. I remember, I think Harry Basil was telling me he would call him at like three in the morning and to go to like run jokes over by him, you know? Yeah. And that, uh, I do that with my wife sometimes. Like I'll wake her up, tell her jokes. And if she laughs, I know it's a good joke because she's so pissed at me for doing that. So yeah. that's, um, Anyway, uh, but yeah, so uh, my daughter is now, we, we had a good time. We had, we had a really good time. Um, so what have you been up to? What's going on in the life of Bill Dawes? Oh, man, you know, I, I, I have my little baby, but she's, she's useless right now. She just kind of like sits around. She doesn't, she doesn't like people at shows or there's no drink. Come to daddy, come to work with daddy days. So, you yeah. know, just try, you know how it is. Just try for life and she's then like, trying uh, to yeah. make some, not have to, blow people for the rent that's sort of where i'm at now that's where i'm at in my career i just don't want to blow people for the rent i got you yesterday i wanted to pick my daughter up from school and i show up and then there's a line of kids boys wanting to give her a hug bye like there was like and then they're showing me their little their little, their little like toy cars like i'm supposed to be impressed by this it's like a like a two dollar monster truck and i'm like all right yeah. <laughs> now adam your daughter is going to be a beautiful girl I mean, she's a beautiful no. girl now, but she's going to be a beautiful teenager and adult. She's going to be trouble. I, you know, I mean, uh, hopefully she's – I want her to be beautiful on the inside, and I want her to be happy, you know, but, but I am yeah. teaching her. In LA, so that's not going to happen. But the point is this. I'm okay. Well, she shows up to wrestling yesterday. We're, we're coaching, and then she's – you know, I have now three girls that play with her. These, these, middle, these middle school kids get credit from the school to watch my kid. Yeah. My community service. And she's, like, walking down the hallways with these three, like, middle school girls. Like, she's the cool – you know, they're <laughs> – <laughs> and so afterwards, she's like, Daddy, you be the coach and I'll be the wrestler. You know, and I'm like trying to teach her like a, a drop step. You know, I'm like teaching her and she, I'm teaching her how to like sprawl. She doesn't know how to sprawl without just dropping to her knees first. It's hard yeah. to like go chest down. Speaking of which, yeah. all right, so you're a jiu-jitsu guy. Let's talk about Dylan Dennis because that's the big news right now. Okay, so Dylan Dennis was at a, a bar in New Jersey, the same bar that like Snooki got punched. It was, I think, it was Dude Punch Snooki. It's a very famous Jersey Shore bar. And yeah. the video is him getting choked by a bouncer and tapping, essentially tapping, and the guy's not letting go. Now, a bunch of these bouncers have reached out to me, uh, trying to either get on the show or wanting to talk to me. and stay yes. out of the I, I mean, yes, and I, there's a part of me that wants to do it, but a part of me is like, man, like, this is like this guy's lowest point in his fucking life. <laughs> you know, it's like, do I want to celebrate this shit? Like, as much as I don't like Dylan Dennis or I think he's kind of a jerk off, it's like, he was obviously drunk. He was getting choked out by a guy behind him. And I don't know. I don't, I, there's a part of me that's like, doesn't want to fucking partake in somebody's like demise, you know, or somebody well, reaches the lowest point. This isn't a total, it's not like he's going to prison or jail or, he just got drunk and he fucked up and he got choked out. He was, he was, he brought it on himself. One thing I will know about bar fights is you will never get choked out at a bar fight unless you did something to instigate something. You know what I mean? 
it's very rare that you're being a heroic human being and you get choked out of a bar fight. Although it happens. Well, their side of the story is he came with a bunch of, they were coming from a wedding and he didn't have ID. So he couldn't get into the bar. And he, he goes, listen, you, you, you know who I am. They didn't know who he was. They're like, listen, if you don't let me in, you're, you're going to get fired. Uh, then the guy said no and put his hand, he tried to walk in. The guy stopped him from putting his hand. Dylan then went to throw a punch. And as he's ready to throw a punch, the bouncer got behind him. This is the bouncer's story. And choked him out from behind on the ground. That's one version. Another version is Dylan and his friends were beating up a bunch of bouncers and tossing them around until they all kind of got them and started, got, came from behind and choked them. But they did, the bouncers obviously didn't even, like they were said, yeah, I'm the bouncer who got him in a sleeper hold. Uh, like they're calling yeah. it a that rear naked choke? Yeah, they're calling it a sleeper hold. So these guys obviously, look, anybody who's drunk, doesn't matter who you are, if you're drunk, I mean, I don't know. There's something kind of sad about it. Like there was this, Don Fry got into a bar fight with a guy in Hawaii, and it was a fight that like he would normally have murdered the guy because he was yeah. drunk. He kind of got hit a couple times, stumbled. It was one of those things. You know, when like Chuck Zito knocked out uh, Van Damme, remember at Scores back in New York? I think back in the 80s or 90s, yeah. he was kind of drunk and he went up to, and then, I don't know, maybe I will have these guys on. I, I, well, I, I will say, what's weird is I feel like most, like nowadays, most bouncers have some sort of MMA training and jujitsu training. I mean, you know, John Donaher was a, was a New York bouncer. I don't know if you ever knew that. Or New York bouncer. But he used to choke people up all the time at the club. He was yeah, going there. I mean, the guy was obviously a strong guy. And people said that the guy, the way the guy wrapped his feet around, any white belt knows the guy across the street. The deal yeah. was actually just like broke the guy's like legs or something. The way doing his ankle. Yeah, I don't really know the move, uh, what they're talking about. You know what they're talking about? I do it because a lot of times, because I'm slow and old, a lot of people will take my back if they're young and, 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 uh, and wiry. And if they're inexperienced, they'll cross their ankles. And all you got to do is bring your, your – your shin over their ankle and their ankle is basically trapped between your legs. You just, you basically triangle their cross yeah. ankle. So if you bring them down, they break. Uh, you know what, maybe, you know, I've been doing a lot of things. I've been focusing on like 10 different things right now. So I kind of saw the, the, the bouncer was sending me the videos and they wanted me to post them. And I, at first I posted it, then I'm like, man, this is, I, maybe I'm getting old or soft or I just suck now. But I'm like, do I fucking want to, when somebody has like their lowest and they're drunk and they're an MMA fighter kind of, and they're getting, do I want to be the guy to be like, look at them? Uh, maybe I do. Maybe I, maybe I need the clicks. Fuck knows. Dotson, how are you? What's going on? I'm good, man. How are you? How are you? Good. What do you think about the whole Dylan Dana situation? I have no idea what's going on, to tell you the truth. Okay. So Dylan Dennis was in New Jersey uh, at a bar. In New Jersey bar, the same one that Snooki went to where she got punched. And uh, there was a video of him getting arrested. <laughs> A picture of him getting arrested, right? So I yeah. actually put it, he got arrested for impersonating an MMA fighter, right? Which yeah, I saw that. I thought that was a joke. Yeah, it wasn't. Well, that was a, he saw why he got arrested, but then some some site in India picked it up actually as a as a real news story. But then they put oh. like anyway. So then the videos came out where him and his friends went out to a bar. I guess Dylan couldn't get in. Didn't have ID. Tried to walk in. They said stop. Dylan went to punch the guy. Bouncer went behind him, choked him, got him to the ground. Dylan tapped. This video of him tapping to a guy before the cops. Uh, other stories are Dylan and his friends were going around beating up bouncers, and then they kind of swarmed on him, and finally they choked him out. I think I don't know what this true story is, but what are your thoughts, given the information I, I just told you? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, one that's kind of hilarious because he got tapped out by a bouncer, and he's supposed to be an undefeated fighter, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. And he's calling out Jake Paul. I mean, he's calling call out the wrong dude right now like shit he got his ass by a bouncer i mean he's gonna get beat up by a youtube sensation okay. next i mean yeah. not even not even beat up though he got like choked in his like in his sport one thing if he got dropped you're like well if, if it was, if he got choked yeah. out by a guy who who said he put him in a sleeper hold didn't even know the name of a rear naked choke it was a sleeper hold yeah. so. that's what makes it even worse he doesn't even know what the move's called and in his jujitsu in jujitsu like that's getting beat up like you tap if you're forced to tap you got beat up Right. Yeah, right. you were forced to submit. But now, is that possible though that a guy who doesn't really know what he's doing but just knows how to just? If he's, he could be huge. I mean, if so many bouncers are just friggin' ginormous, and if he he's big enough, big. and he gets his friggin'. He wasn't that big. Way, if we were thinking about it. no, 
Well, let's let's we'll just go ahead and say like he got the drunk look the draw because he was drunk. Is yeah. that he's trying to go into a club? Got got booted, and the guy just snuck up on him. Anybody that has like, any lucky day? I mean, my kids can go ahead and choke me out if I'm falling asleep. <laughs> so let's talk about you because. I was worried. I wrote a joke to you, you crashed your matchbox car in the beginning of the, sh- the, beginning of the show, by the way. Uh, but so what happened? Uh, I read you got into a car accident with your whole family. Yeah, it was me, my girls, and my wife. So I was devastated because my son looked. I was lucky that my son wasn't with us because then it would have been like more of a more pressing for all of us and made more traumatic. But he was with his grandmother because he wanted to drive up with her. And I was like, okay, cool. But so we were driving through. Like, like Wichita Falls or getting to Wichita Falls, we're in the Electra, Texas. But I see a car on the side of the road, it was pitch black, and I was like, oh, that's kind of a nice car sitting in the middle, like on the side of the road. I went down the hill, came back up, and it was right in the dead center of the, of the highway. And I was like, oh, shit. So I tried to swerve out of the way, and I ended up clipping the back end of it. And I rolled, we rolled into the median. The, the cables that were on the median saved us. And I was like, what the fuck? I heard the kids screaming, I heard my wife screaming. I was like, okay, cool. Now let's find out what the damage is with them, if they're okay, if there's any broken bones or anything. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't see them, so I got out. It was all kind of smoke because the airbags all deployed and exploded on me. So I had to jump through like the side passenger door because the driver's side door was on the ground. So I had to jump through the side, keep on jumping up like I was Super Mario Brother trying to uh, bust out some gold coins. Yeah. And to break through the door, jumped out the backside or outside the top of it, ran through the back, kicked in the back window, and grabbed everybody out. Oh my God. And no one was hurt. No one from us were hurt, but our car was totaled and it looked like completely bad. So I looked for, I looked around. I was like, hey man, why was there, there's no hazard lights on, no flares or anything? Like this is the middle of nowhere. There's absolutely no lights. It's black, like straight dark. What was going on? And I asked one guy, and the guy was like, hey man, that car hit us. I was like, hit you guys? And it's a semi truck. Um, he goes, yeah, he hit us and got disabled, and we're trying to move everybody out and flag everybody down. I was like, and how long ago was this? He's like, oh, maybe like five or ten minutes. But within that five or ten minutes, another car hit a, hit them before us. And then we hit, we're the last ones to hit them. So I was like, you was the guy. SUV, right? Don't you have an SUV? Yeah, I, was in my, I was in my SUV. Yeah. And I was, I was like, trying to get the guy's information. I was like, hey, where's the guy? The guy? And they're like, man, he left. He just ran. Oh, my God. So, yeah. so, so the guy out. left with his car there? Yeah, he left with his car there. So what made matters worse, because I was like, man, what the hell? Then they're like, yeah, somebody died. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Who died? It was like, did the guy die that I ended up hitting? They're like, no, he wasn't even in the vehicle. I was like, okay, cool. That was the semi-truck driver's passenger died because they hit a cow. And that's how it started the whole accident. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. So, yeah, the semi-truck hit a cow that was in, in the middle of the highway, got stuck. His passenger flew through the windshield, died. Then a uh, that car hit the car, hit the semi truck, got disabled. Another car hit him, put him into the angle that he was, and then we had to finish it in the car. That, so that I'll is leave. argument I've heard for being vegan. What I just heard right now. <laughs> was it right now? No, 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 that's when I started eating more cows. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> that's great. Well, listen, I'm so happy you're okay. I mean, your kids are you're young. Uh, yeah. Were they, were they traumatized or? My middle child's like she's like going ham because she thinks anytime it's nighttime and we're driving on like on like a long road trip or something she thinks we're automatically we're gonna get an accident i was like no that that happened one time it's called an accident like accidents right. happen and she's like no they don't i was like yeah do you accidentally poop in your pants sometimes she was like, well yeah I was like, isn't it an accident like, yeah and I was like, exactly it doesn't happen all the time but when it happens it happens well that's every tuesday for me but but <laughs> yeah that's wow well then yeah all right God, i'm so happy you're ha- you're okay man so happy you're what, okay. what are you serious, John? Did you? I mean, I guess it's something you wouldn't want to disclose ahead of your fight, like if you got injured or anything like that. But was it? I don't care. Like they, like they already have it out there. Like if they can, if they really want to know anything. Like I, uh, I had to go get an MRI on my knees because both of them, well, both of them were like sore. I had to go check on my shoulder, and then everything else has been put back into place. So yeah. I've been like Mr. Robotic being put back together. Can't say hi. <laughs> She's like over here. Hey, you're, so cute, <laughs> She's like, uh, you're talking to somebody. I want to talk to them too. But it's yeah, like perfect like, combination of like black, Filipino, and white. Uh, that is a, what a great combination. Well, uh, right. She's Hispanic. Your wife's Hispanic. Yeah. Oh, I, just, I thought she was white. Uh, no, oh. she looks white. She just. 
I like his family. <laughs> well, your daughter is adorable. Um, and I'm so happy that, that you're okay. Now, uh, you were supposed to fight Cody Gibson, uh, tough guy, um, just a, a wrestler, another guy that's a, a UFC vet. That fight got pushed till the end of the month, right? Well, yeah, we got pushed back until next month for October, but we didn't know what was going to happen. Actually, Cody was like a super nice dude. He was trying to go ahead and donate money to that GoFundMe that we had that was, that was launched up on a like for us. And he was like, hey, man, can I go ahead and do that? And I was like, I don't want to take your hard earned money from you going ahead and exit when me and you were supposed to fight. It just feels awkward for me. So I just told him, I just shut down the whole thing. And I was like, yeah, if I'm going to make, if we're going to, if I want money from you, I'll go, I want to earn it from you. So, and here we are now. Yeah, he's a good dude. He's a uh, school teacher. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a nice guy. He's a yeah. nice school teacher. I mean, but what yeah. do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean, John? What do you mean? Yeah, you're not buying the school teacher. Get up. Ah. <laughs> everybody, like everybody's a school teacher. Like I teach. I'm a school teacher. When I teach my kids all the time. It's just they're very different these days. <laughs> so now you're back training. You're at. You're at. Uh, I was told that happened. Everybody had these teachers. Yeah, of course, of course. And so now you're back training. Let's talk about the fights this week because this week we got a great UFC card. Uh, we, I mean, it's it, it's stacked. Uh, first of all, Nick Diaz versus Robbie Lawler. This video of Nick Diaz, and they're not good. Have you seen, have you seen these videos? I haven't seen them. But here, here's the, here's the thing. My thing is, Nick is always the gamer one out of the two of the Diaz's. Like, if you really think about it, he's always coming down to fight, and he's always wanting to go ahead and just unleash hell and punishment on somebody. Now, with that being said, he didn't do it against Anderson. That was his last fight, and he was just kind of, like, playing around and just mocking him and doing this and that. But since it's Robbie Lawler who's always trying to get in your face, it's a different story. Because now Robbie's going to sit to try to put his face, and that's what kind of fighter like, Nick Diaz thrives on. Like, he sits there and like wants to go out there and punish people left and right when they're stepping forward just to make them look silly, and that's the type of fight that is geared toward him. That's in his favor. But in these videos, he's like he looks very slow. Oh, that looks like me. Look at, that was like the dark version of me with an afro. I mean, he looks slow and like he looks like he's not in the best of shape. Look, I'm a Nick Diaz fan. I don't care how slow he is. Uh, I'll always watch Nick Diaz, and I want Nick Diaz to win. I, I you can't. Be an, I don't think you could be an MMA fan and not group of the Diaz brothers. But oh, absolutely not. Do you think maybe he's sort of, you know, yeah. it's on person to, a purpose to fuck with people, like going real just to, or his speed's gone? No, I really think that he's trying to fuck with people because have you, these videos have been coming out right recently, and actually a lot of people have sat there and said that they train with Nick Diaz, and they, they're professional boxers, and said he gave them the hardest time ever. So okay. it's kind of confusing on seeing these like these videos recently. If you're telling me that he looks slow and sloppy, because I've seen him last year and like six months ago when he was sitting and just drawing dudes. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, he's, he like, must like just be in a bad mood and doesn't want to be there. Yeah. He's like, I mean, he he says he should be fighting Usman. He, yeah. He goes. He goes. Whoever puts his fights together is a complete moron. But he's going to sign the contract. He put the fight together. All right. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. he can sit there. Nah, I'll take somebody else. Yeah, right. Now we got Sadiq Youssef. You know who this is, by the way? Yo, yo, what up? Uh, what is going on here? Yeah, this is Sadiq, are you guys, you think, are like the cops chasing you? What was that noise? Nah, that, that's not me. That's the worst that's going on. That's somebody you, background. That's okay, so Sadiq Youssef, nah, by the way, Dodson, is, uh, this kid's a prodigy. He's from Africa. He's a monster. Oh, I like he's, him. He's from Texas. He's got amazing striking. He's been banging every girl in Texas. <laughs> See his Instagram. Hey, one I, girl. I, I, Adam's racist, racist as hell. Do you think about the other African? <laughs> he's smashing. All, all, all the other part, all the other part was true, except for the Texas part. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, Sadiq, how are you, man? What's going on? Good, good. I'm not even from Africa. It says you're from Africa on your, <laughs> on your Wikipedia page. I'm joking. I'm joking around. I, it's all good except for, except for Texas. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Now, uh, it says you're from Nigeria. Now, you're number 12 in the world. Number 12 in the world. Uh, yes, your sir. last fight was against Arnold Allen. Tough fight. You got, you got dropped a couple times, but you came yeah. back. You won the third. Uh, I think if it was a five-round fight, you would have won. Um, I think you just ran out of rounds. For sure. For sure. But... Yeah, I don't. Um, 
I feel like even though I've been doing this for a little bit, there's still some things I got to learn, you know. So that, that probably was one of those fights where even though I was down two rounds, in my mind, I was still focused on winning rounds instead of finishing the fight. And it's kind of one of the first times I found myself in that kind of position. So that's one of those things where, like, the experience mattered. I, I kind of had to go through that. And we made the right adjustments um, after I came back. So I think I'll be better off next time. The third round, you're thinking, win this third round as opposed to I need to finish. Yeah, yeah, you know, because that's kind of how people see my fighting style and they, they think, like, I'm just, like, a, always going for a knockout kind of guy. But the knockout just kind of comes just because of that's just, like, my, my skill sets. But most of the time, I'm always focused on winning each round. So, like, I, di I didn't make the mental adjustment when that happened. When you Dawson, got knocked. You're like, Dawson, you're like the opposite fighter. Uh, you never want to win the round. You want to knock the guy out every time. I try every single time, and I'm swinging for the fences, and everybody keeps on telling me, hey, start winning rounds. Like, <laughs> I hate them as hard as I can until they fall. Yeah, you could combine you guys. You'd have the, the greatest fighter ever, ever. Um, exactly. Oh, so what you you got, you got, you got, uh, uh, are you saying it's because of our <laughs> – Bill, Bill, what were you saying, Bill? I was like, when you got knocked down, you got knocked down twice, right? And uh, but you got up really quickly. Were any of those uh, punches open enough to take you out? Did you almost did you, uh, like the the, the the kick? The kick was really rough. The the um, yeah. punch wasn't that bad because it was just kind of one of those things where you don't see it. So if yeah. you don't see it, the impact just um drops you. But the kick was bad. I like my legs was gone on, on the kicks. But it, um, crazy about that with that kick, Sadiq, is that you blocked it. Yeah, but it skinned. It skinned like the top. It skinned like the top of my skull. Like it, it, it went a little bit right over the glove. The camera angle makes it look like it just hit the glove, but it like skinned the top of the glove and went to the top of my head. That, Dawson, never happened to you where you block something and you like it still hurts all the time. <laughs> hurts my forearm, my hand, yeah. my head. I remember Bass was um, said a long time ago. It's like you put your hands up and let me kick you in the head. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, see if you can take right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, because uh, I mean, but you know what sucks is that like you did. It, I feel like you did everything right, Sadiq. Like you had the perfect uh, defense for that kick, but it still kind of yeah. got down. Yeah, you know what? Um, I was looking in the comments like after the fight, and one dude was like, "Man, Sadiq's gonna be real upset when he gets home and find out he lost a fight due to two strikes, just because of like." When you see, like, the strike counts and everything like that, you see how far ahead I was. But he, he deservedly won those first two rounds because those two strikes were, like, did a lot of damage, you know. So it's, it's one of those things is, like, you wish you had a time machine, but it is what it is. John, what was uh, some of the fights you wish you had a time machine for? Uh, Demetrius won, Demetrius two, Amala Marais, John Lineker. I mean, we can not go with those list. <laughs> Dude, that um, that, that Demetrius one fight. Was <laughs> yeah, that uh, John's. That, uh, Man, Demetrius I don't understand how I lost that one. Yeah, I won that one. I dropped it. Who's uh, Bill? Who's who's uh, internet's fucking the show up? Is it mine or it's not mine's yours? Fine. Is it Dotson's or is it Sadiq's? Uh, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Mine's on the 5G. I'm on have another Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm in. I'm in my gym right now. Okay, I'm now how so Dick is walking through a suburban neighborhood, and honestly, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, don't don't worry. I'm about to get to Wi-Fi pretty soon. I have to finish walking my my dog. <laughs> Got it, Dotson. Why are there Ninja Turtles above your head? Because <laughs> there's all. There's only, I told you I'm in my gym. I was like, hell yeah, I got I'm under, I got my turtles. <laughs> well, this is your own personal gym, or this is this is not. Oh, uh, <laughs> my wife got that for me. She was like, "John, I got, babe, I got you this." I was like, "Hell yeah!" I was like, "I want to put this in the house." She said, "Absolutely not." And I was like, "Why not?" She was <laughs> because that goes in your gym. And I was like, <laughs> "Wait, so you're not a Greg Jackson anymore?" What? Yeah, I train over there still. So I just got okay. to train over there, and I rush over here so I can come talk to you. Got it, got it, got it, oh. got it, got it. Uh, and which turtle are you, by the way, John? Which one are you? You identify as one of them, right? I identify myself with Donnie because I'm very techie and nerdy, and I can still kick ass. Hey, but I, if I, I have to deal with it, and then going to say shit, I ain't the motherfucker that died first. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, I, Steve, I always say you could tell a lot about a person by who their favorite Ninja Turtle is and who their least favorite Ninja Turtle is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, Sadiq, I'm, I'm following you on Instagram. Are you working at Hooters now? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. They got me. Um, 
they got me doing like a little sponsorship thing. That's what's going on. I, I, <laughs> it wouldn't be a bad gig though. Cause I mean, you're always plugging Hooters. Like, what's what's going? Are you banging the manager or the chicks? What's going on? <laughs> nah, nah, just just some just some sponsorship on the side, man. They they treat they treat me pretty well, so I just gotta do my part with the posts. Got it. Now, are you a camp counselor too? Uh, no. I. You mean like for like the martial arts gym? I see you dancing outside with a bunch of oh, like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um. But they they had they had um Camp Springs Day like um just like the local event for this area, and I I did like my little part like teach, I taught some martial arts a little bit, and I decided to join in on the fun. There's all these horny women around you, these like cougars. They're all surrounding <laughs> the, the, you the, dancing. The, the fifty year olds. <laughs> yeah, who, are, who are those women? It looks like they're like. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? You're dancing in the middle of them. They're all checking out your butt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just, just giving them a show, man. Got to do my part. Uh, okay, all right. I'm like, you're at Hooters, <laughs> dancing with thirsty women. Damn. Yeah, so, yeah it's, it's a lot more fun when it's, um, when it's at Hooters than when it's at, um, with the older 50-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the fights this week. Okay, do we like Volkanowski or uh, – do we like uh, the guy he's fighting? Uh, what's his name? <laughs> the guy he's fighting. <laughs> what? <laughs> the guy he's fighting. I'm going with Ortega on this one. Why are we going with Ortega? Because Ortega is like very versatile on the ground and going to mix it up. He's actually had really good striking. And Volkanovski has shown that he can go ahead and put the pressure going forward. But Ryan Ortega can go ahead and sub somebody once they do that. Somehow your uh, your sound went down, right? Is that just me? Can I I can barely hear you. What what what's going on? This is, what's, what's can you you oh, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me now? Better. This is can like a, this podcast yeah. brought to you by like Wish. All right. So <laughs> uh, so Deke, who do we like? Yeah. Ortega or Volkanovski? Yeah, I'll I'll go with Dotson said, man. I, I'm going with Ortega too. Just just you got to remember this is my weight class too. So I spent a couple of times staring at these guys. Uh -huh. Um, or, or Ortega, um, the ground game is a big factor for the fight. And Ortega is one that kind of just goes forward no matter what's really happening in the fight. He doesn't really um, let his opponent get a lot of breathing space. And Volkanovski is striking is really based on fakes and making his opponent stand still. Ortega doesn't – and that, when you watch the first Max fight and the second Max fight, you'll see that was a big adjustment that Max made. You know, Max – kind of didn't care about what his fakes was. He just attacked anyways. Ortega normally fights like that anyways. So I'm looking forward to Ortega. Bill Dawes? Well, I mean, I think it's pretty crazy that, like, I actually want Ortega to win too, but I don't know. I think it's just because Vol Volkanovski, I think he just annoys me or something because he's Australian, <laughs> Russian. What, what's going on? <laughs> and Brian Ortega, come on, he's Instagram hot. You got to go for the guy who's, I don't know, I, I'm a jiu-jitsu guy, so I love the fact that he has really interesting, versatile uh, submissions, and he can get it from a lot of different places. So I, I would prefer to see him win, because I think it would be an interesting fight if he wins. Yeah, well, but, how, is, I, how does Ortega get Tracy Cortez, Halle Berry, and Demi Lovato? Like, he doesn't... His he, he's nice, dude, that's all you need. His personality is not great. Like he's not like a charming. I can see like how Uriah Faber was getting involved. Like Uriah Faber, I mean, but how is? I mean, Sadiq Youssef should be getting these girls. Uh, like, every, everybody knows personality is the biggest thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, how is? I mean, I don't know. You're right. I mean, you're right. He's a good-looking guy, but but I'm just saying he's not like. I mean, Luke Rockhold's a better-looking guy than. Than, than this dude, I don't know. Maybe, well, yeah, Luke, but, but or Ortega give a better vibes than the Brock you know. Yeah, dude, can, I, can, I, and he's the Latin, the Latin lover thing going on. Come on, that counts. Women dude, love Luke, it. Dude, Luke Brock, I heard, I heard a story that he like uh, hooked. I, I don't, Dotson's daughter's right there, but he uh, hooked up with a girl in front of all her friends and uh, did did a lot of things in front of her, and, and they gave him instructions on how to, you know, do this. So I sat next to him at the award show. And I go, hey, uh, is it true that you, uh, B-A-N-G-E-D, this girl in front of all her friends? And he looks at me and he goes, not all her friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've heard stories of orgies revolving our man, Luke Rockhold. Yes. Good for him. Yes. Uh, what were you saying, Dawson? I, now I can't hear him. What? And now he's just, I, I, you're just pointing to your daughter. Now you're sounding oh, yeah. too off. I'm what were you now? Can you hear Dotson or just me, John? 
he, he's trying to tell you that his daughter's really good at spelling, like, so you can't spell, just spell her. Is that what you were saying? Like, you <laughs> Act like she can understand anything. She's two. Uh, I, I like, <laughs> <laughs> he's saying she's, she's the best two-year-old speller in the world, oh, so you can't. Yeah. can't do that. <laughs> All right. Bill, take a break for one second, because I got to tell everyone about Bet Online. We are back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back on for another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Who doesn't love football? I love football. So head over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use promo code CLNS50 to receive your bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, or onto your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online. Where the game starts. All right, come on right back. So, okay, <laughs> I'm picking Volkanovski based on who I want to win. Uh, but he also hasn't, hasn't lost in, like, 30 fights. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, so, it's so weird, you know. Like, I think Volkanovski is really, really good. But for some, I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know why um, I, I pick Ortega. And every time he fights, I honestly don't pick him. But it's, it's strange. I don't know. I don't know what yeah. it is. I, I think he's kind of got that like uh, that steep a or, or like uh, Jan bag where like people just don't want to believe that he's like the top of the top of the game. You know what I mean? And and you don't have one thing you could point at specifically is that he's great at that. You know, he's kind of yeah. good at everything. So it's it's hard to just pinpoint the one thing he's good at. So another one uh, this week, one of your former training partners, I believe, Sadiq Lauren Murphy, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know which. African, you got me confused with, you know? <laughs> didn't you train with her? By the, time this, by the time this is over. Wait, didn't you train with her in, in Texas at, uh, at Fortis? <laughs> Aren't you at Fortis? Okay, I? that that's the African. I think you got me confused with Kennedy. You, wait, you, don't, wait, Kennedy? You, don't, you don't train at Fortis sometimes? No, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just real cool with those guys. I, I never oh. train at Fortis. Why do I always think you're at Fortis? Because you're racist. <laughs> <laughs> why, would, why would that... Possibly be wait. Don't you live in Texas now? You're, 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 you're in Maryland. You're in Maryland. Yes. I thought you cross train in Texas for some reason. For some reason, I always think you. Okay. No. 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 Okay. So, so Vic, Vic was in Texas and Vic used to come cross train here. All right. It's trying. It's trying. It's trying to make sense a little bit. Okay, now. James May. Maybe that's why. Okay. All yeah. Right. Okay, so there's a lot of confusion. It's me, yeah. big trains from Texas over here. I'm real cool with those guys at Fortis. So that's what oh, it's okay. like. For some reason, I thought, I don't know, maybe your fighting style. I feel like you fit in well at Fortis. You should go to Fortis. I would. I would. That's why I said, that's why I, I like them. I like the way they. Yes. All right, now, are you, okay, so you're still in Maryland. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So who do we like? We like Laura Murphy or Shevchenko? Shevchenko. Go ahead, Bill. <laughs> oh, oh, the girl of the of the of the ladies. Well, I mean, come on, we had we had our girl on, so I gotta gotta vote for her. Yeah, she's on the podcast, and she's hotter. Yeah. Wait, Lauren, wait, Lauren's hotter. Wait, hold on. You guys, wait, who was the girl we had last last week? That, that oh was, no, you're right. I was the girl from Australia. I'm sorry, wrong wrong, wrong one. Oh, We're man. talking about Deborah Shevchenko. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you are all this, over the place. This, this, this is this, like the eighty. It's, po- it's supposed to be Adderall. This podcast is about Adderall. the real, the real Shashenko, not the not the <laughs> became Shashenko sister. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. we're, we're, Obviously, yeah. Shashenko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we not. Uh, yeah, Shashenko is a girl who's like twenty one and three. She dances. She head kicked Jessica. I she basically yeah, no, just woke great. up last week. She, she yeah. beat up. She beats everyone up. She just picks no, up. No, no, a- Adam, you're thinking about Amanda Nunez. That's the wrong girl. No, no, I'm not thinking of Nunez. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm messing around. No, <laughs> <What's> the- <laughs> Nunez does not dance. Okay, she doesn't. You know, you know what? Can't beat basically. Right? She's lost her <laughs> twice. Right? No, well, this girl said she's like she's like a 1,200 favorite on this fight. She's just yeah, murdering yeah. everybody. But Lauren Murphy is a girl, like I said before, that like her dad. 
passed away. He was a pilot. He turned to drugs. He was a heroin addict. Lost custody of her kid. Went to a gym with her kid. Was a single mom. Started training with her kid. Now it's ten years later. And she's fighting for the title, and she hits hard. She looks jacked. Uh, and I root for her. I fucking. Uh, she's a friend of mine. A really good friend of mine. So I yeah. hope she pulls off this upset. But it's a. She's got a big uh, mountain. Oh, hundred to one. Yeah, I've never odds like that in UFC. Yeah, it's it's a it's a tough hill to climb. That's for sure. You know, and it, it's a great story. I wish story won fights, but a lot of it doesn't really play out like that a lot of times. You know, so I will have to go with Shevchenko. Dude, you actually there's nothing worse than like I watched the Contender right, and they'll be like, this guy, uh, he oh, was so broke and he was homeless and he 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 sold he drove six hours with his mom to sell soap yeah. in Brazil, yeah. and, and it's just like yeah. you're just like. You start crying. You're like, and yeah, then, and then yeah. everyone in his family got massacred, and, and no one. Know, and then he goes to the, the octagon and gets his shit beat out of him. Like, and, yeah. and, and, and then imagine when you when you have personal relationships with these guys too, it becomes a lot worse. Like the older I get, the less and less I want to watch my teammates fight. You know? Uh, yeah, dude. Seriously, that happened with Ellenberger. He used to he used to be the co-host of the podcast. And I went to his fight against Wonder Boy, and he got like spinning wheel kick, knocked that out. And I'm sitting there like. And I'm in the, I'm in the pearl because you know like on, on the floor like this just like charging my phone yeah. and somebody's like can I take a picture <laughs> and I'm just like yeah I'll take a picture with you bro like yeah <laughs> it's the what now after your last how did you take your last loss by the way did you uh, crawl up in a ball do you not talk to anybody oh, yeah yeah uh, well not um I, I I it wasn't that bad I, I had my moment of crying i'm a big crier i cry even like when my teammates lose you know so that's kind of it but right after that i was back to watching film again you know it was it's one of those that i had a lot to learn from it so and, and i've always had when i wrestled in high school i only wrestled three years in high school i remember um all, everybody that was like ahead of me like the graduates was like man you're gonna um when it's all over you're gonna have like regrets and stuff like that but when it was over i'm not gonna lie i felt nothing because i've never been a bullshitter it's like I always put in as much work as I can. And then after that, the what happens is just what happens. So I, I definitely still cried after the losses um, to Arnold. But it was one of those things where, like, the things I got hit with was kind of like I got caught, you know. You also won the third round. I mean, it, you had the momentum after, like, yeah. going your way. Yeah, but it is I, – I feel like me and him are definitely going to meet up again in the future. So it's one of those things, like, I got to be ready when it happens again. I have a social question, Adam. This is sort of – but, like – Nigerian Americans are killing the game. I feel like everywhere they go, like I feel like they're more Nigerian American doctors now, more in college, yeah. UFC. Like, Comedian, what is that? Comedians, Godfrey, and you know. yeah, I think I think it's just like an immigrant thing. It's like an immigrant mentality. It's like it's a weird. Um, I always say like if you was born in a room and the room had like walls covered in gold that gold wouldn't mean shit to you but if somebody came from outside and walked in, i was like oh shit there's gold all over here like it means a whole lot more to them so that immigrant mentality is kind of how i see america so it doesn't really matter like what field we pick i think it's just a little bit easier for us to see how big of opportunity is going on if that's doctor being a comedian or being a fighter Yo, yeah, look you, at this you, uh, crazy you dog. Trump, right? Yeah. Weren't you a big Trump, weren't you a big Trump supporter? <laughs> I, I was a big Kanye guy. Yo, leave me alone. <laughs> you voted for Kanye, really? Yeah, I, I, um, I've, I've been a big Kanye supporter since. So, no, I didn't vote for no damn Kanye, man. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I knew a comedian. I knew a comedian that made a fortune on Kanye because he was living in Missouri. And he got a job canvassing for Kanye, and you got like, he got like ten dollars a signature. So any anywhere he went, where somebody said they vote for Kanye, he got like they gave him Kanye gave him ten bucks. So he he said he couldn't oh, get, nice. he said he couldn't get black people to sign it. They'd be like fuck that, <laughs> <laughs> but like white people signed it. So like, yeah, for sure. It. You know you know why they signed his guilt. <laughs> You can you can get white people to enjoy anything. <laughs> but black people, I thought he was like being racist. Like, get the fuck out of here! But he really was getting like ten dollars a day. He made thousands of dollars. Like, I mean, like thirty grand. Like, he made like the the comedy club he owns is now in business because of Kanye's. I mean, Kanye <laughs> must have lost a fucking fortune on this. Paying, I mean, ten dollars a signature to get on the ballot. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the um bipolar stuff man dude's got a couple mental issues so you gotta let him do what he do so all right 
Nick Diaz, Robbie Lawler. Who do you like in this fight? <laughs> I'm just watching for entertainment, man. That's not a real fight. It's not a real fight. Nick Diaz. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I mean, I, I don't want to sound like this. Is, Nick, it's just, it's, just a, it's just entertainment, you know? Nick Diaz and Robbie Lawler. I don't think either one of them is, like, really – I, to be honest, actually, both of them going out there fighting for one round and being like, all right, fuck it, that's enough, and just b- bounce out. I don't know what to expect from Nick Diaz. Nick hasn't fought since I was a kid, you know? Yeah. And um, Robbie, Robbie Lawler is, like, t- is starting to head towards retirement, you know? So I guess because of activity, I might want to say Lawler, but to be honest, I can't really remember last time I saw Lawler fight either, you know? So it's to me, it's one of those things where, like, it's like the name means a lot, but, you know, but... So I guess I'll pick Robbie Law. Now Nick says that he should have got Usman. Um, I saw it. I saw that. You know what's funny? I was, I was I was at practice last night, and somebody read it out loud. You know, like it wasn't the video that was playing. They, they read the Nick Diaz quote, and I was like, "What the fuck does that even mean?" Huh. Like it was like it was like I, it took it took me like five minutes to like piece together what it was saying because it was like, um, whoever put this together is an idiot. I I I, I think I I'm, I have a better shot. At Against Usman than I do Lawler, and I was just so confused, man. I was, I, I didn't, yeah. So that's you know what though, was, if it was boxing, they'd make that fight. If it was boxing, what, um, they would, they oh, would yeah, for, like, oh no, don't get it twisted. If Nick wins, they're gonna make that fight in the UFC. <laughs> don't know. get it twisted at all. And 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 if I was Usman, I'll take that fight. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Usman will take that fight. Yeah, what's well, funny? At the end of the day, so that would get a lot of money. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I, I so wouldn't blame him at all. Like, I'm sure if Usman didn't ha- already have um something signed up, I would have asked the UFC for that fight 100. Yeah. So, they so, got to complete um, with. So when you moved here from Nigeria, Sadiq, uh, did you experience a lot of racism? People giving you a hard time? No. Yeah, you now you gotta understand. I moved um so here in Maryland, I'm in PG County. PG County got like it's almost like eighty percent black people. So I, oh, wow. I, I never have a white friend until I became an adult. So because wow. and, and I was we, we didn't have a lot of money, so I wasn't doing any type of traveling. So my my version of what America was, I didn't really get to see what America was yeah. until I started like traveling for like tournaments and like fighting and wrestling. Like that was like damn, look at all these white people. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I, I didn't really really like. Yeah. Where you go to high school? Where you, where so you yeah, go to high school? Bladensburg. It's right. It's literally across the street from where I lived. You know, so we had we had like maybe three white kids in our school, and and, oh, wow. and the rest was all like black, African, and Spanish. And so your wrestling yeah. team was all black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, no white, no white kids on the wrestling team. We didn't even to be. I didn't even know we had a wrestling team. Like that's. <laughs> I'm talking about like black, black. Like <laughs> I didn't know we had a wrestling the team until I heard Joe Rogan say something about <laughs> high school wrestling on TV. And then I was like, oh, let me go find out if this school has that. And no then I way. went to go ask the, um, the the sports director. And she was, yeah, yeah, I didn't even know about, like, I always said I wanted to be in the UFC as a kid, but I didn't know, like, step one, two, or three to get there. I couldn't afford any type of, like, martial arts training, so that wasn't happening. So I, I asked the high school director. It turns out we had a wrestling team, but there was just, like, four people on the team. So I, I tried to join my my sophomore year, but at that time, I was still a little bit of a knucklehead, so my grades wasn't good enough for me to wrestle. So the next year, I got my grades straight, and then I wrestled my junior senior. I love the idea of these four white kids in the wrestling team, and then you show up, they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 that was the funniest hell. They was like, we got one. <laughs> the only four white kids in the school was all on the wrestling team. <laughs> I walk in, and, and the, the, the sun is shining behind me. <laughs> it's like, not, not only is he black, he's African. He's a, yeah. They all, as they, get. they all like, they all walk out like I uh, can't even get this fucking part. Now, um, that's okay. So you came here now, but was there racism uh, amongst other black people because you're from Africa? Sometimes I feel like Africans. Well, well like, here, here, here's the thing. I don't, um, I don't like to call it racism. I think a lot of it was ignorance. You know, like I, it's funny. I was literally just talking about this yesterday because that all that is kind of dead now. But it was like ignorance because when I first came here as a kid. A lot of the things they thought about Africa was, like, just the things that they saw on TV, you know? So, like, it was, like, those same, like, lions and tigers and stuff like that. So everything that they, like, they would say would be things, like, pertaining to that. But as we got older and, like, the internet got bigger, like, now little kids have internet, you know? So 
all, yeah. most of those questions are kind of dead. A lot of them kind of have a better view of what Africa is. You know, I remember when I was like in fourth grade or something, I, I had two other Nigerians in my class, but I, I was like fresh out, out of the country. You know, my English, English wasn't so great. And it was like, man, have you ever seen like lions and tigers and stuff like that? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Thinking that they're talking about like seeing them in the zoo, you know, because I went to the zoo. <laughs> home. I see mad lions and tigers, you know? I'm like, yeah, I'm trying, and like now I'm trying to defend it because I think I'm thinking they don't believe I've been to the zoo. I'm like, man, I've seen so many lions and tigers. Man. I've seen them all the time. And the two other little African girls in my class are like, no, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. Like, we don't have that. We don't have that. Yeah. You know, like, the class and bullshit. Yeah. yeah, it's little things like that. I remember one thing, the teacher, man, the teacher got me with a good one. I, I was writing, um, you know, um, in your notebooks, you have those little red border lines. Like you can see like the red line on the yeah. other side. Yeah. You're supposed to write in between the margin. So I, I always wrote past it. But just as a kid, you know, I didn't know any better. And one time the teacher comes up to me, she goes, well, you know, we have a lot of books here. You know, you don't have to um try to save up space. We have a lot of books here. You can stop <laughs> early. I was like, come on. <laughs> well, America. So, that's a, yeah, a- yeah. Hey, that's not, like I said, it's, it's just ignorance, man. But around here, like, now people love Africans, man. They embrace us. You know, a lot of people try to go back home. So it's, it's one of those things where I think, like, the Internet made a really big impact on yeah. that. And I have a question. I in Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> Bill. Bill, what are you saying? No. Oh, I just paid this. Anyway, I've been to Africa (laughs) twice. I've been to Africa twice. I went to uh, Djibouti, Africa to do comedy for the military. And we flew through Nigeria. And the most beautiful flight attendants in the world. I don't know what it is, but they don't have ugly flight attendants. Like, you you fly through Africa (laughs) air. They're all, like, beauty queens. Uh, Yeah. I think I yeah I think they they do that on purpose especially if you depend on what airlines you take like Emirates and stuff like that I think you gotta you gotta do like a whole model walk before you get on <laughs> before you get on yeah. your team you gotta, you gotta send them pictures and all that seriously it's right? open America yeah. where you have dump truck stewardesses really let's be honest because like a fat lady will sue the airlines if they don't get hired you know what exactly, I mean exactly exactly those kind of you gotta think too those laws don't really exist in other places like they're not they don't care what you do like you gotta look like a model to work for them. Mm-hmm. But well, when I was there, the big drug was cot. You ever hear about this drug called cot? Yeah, yeah. And Bill, this it's so it's a it's like meth and crack, and these people take it. And like when I was there, it was the uh, Ethiopian king. His wife was the biggest drug dealer in like the country, and they were giving out cot to everybody. And you just see people on the side of the road. It was like the oh. one head, just like drooling. It it was the saddest thing. And then we they took us out. The NCIS took me out on these missions to give water to kids, to little kids from Africa. We gave them like this much of water, and you would think we gave them like a million dollars each. Like oh. it was some of the saddest shit I've ever seen in my life. I, I, yeah, I, 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 that drug is like a like a more like an East African thing. I've heard about it before, though. Oh my god, it was it was uh, yeah. I never denied Nigeria. I want to go to Nigeria. I, I want to go now. Are you, are you are you a celebrity there now? Are you like uh? Uh-huh. So each each time I go back, it gets like a little bit bi- bigger and bigger, you know. So la- last time I went back, um, I still last time I went back was when I kind of felt like, all right, next time I come, I actually got to come a little bit more professional because one time I had like the area boys surround me. I thought shit was about to get real, but it was all love, you know, like, oh, so much of these, so much of these. So it was like next time I go back, I got to definitely go a little bit more professional. But I haven't been, to be honest, I haven't been to Nigeria in a little while, man. I keep telling myself I'm going to go, but before I used to go all the time. So now it's just something I got mentally prepared for. I haven't been back since my brother's past. So uh, it's, I, I, before we all used to say it, like as a family, we'll all like, somebody would just bring it up and like, it'll be spontaneous. But we have, it's always been like two years now. Like my, my eldest brother passed and then my, the one right before me passed too. And he's the one that always picks up. He's the one that always picks me up from the airport. So, and a little bit of, in the back of my mind, a little bit, I still try to pretend like they're both back at home. And then not so long ago, like a month or so, two ago, my mom said something. She was like, man, I think it's time for us to go back to Nigeria. And I fucking hesitated. I, I started stuttering. So I think she read into, into like my reaction. Like in my mind, I was always putting it on them. I was like, I don't think my family's ready to go back. But then when, when, when she said it, I, I wasn't prepared, you know, so I, I, I got to mumbling and shit. So she, she dropped it again. But it's, it's one of those battles I got to face when I'm ready. Sorry about your brothers, number one. Uh, 
Number two. Now, you, now, you, now you, you have it now. You know, you have one mom now. Because last time we talked, you had four. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I still, um, <laughs> well, I still got the other, the other two back at home, and one had passed away. But it's always been just me and my mom. You know, I, I actually, um, I rec- I bought this house like, um last november and i moved her and my little brother in there so all of us kind of stay we all kind of stay together you know so yeah yeah so Deke's from, that's uh, that's the biggest thing i always said i told dad, my coach i was like go on what were you saying oh no i was saying like i always i always stayed like low-key with all the stuff from the ufc as you guys know all of us we fighters we're not making crazy amount of money you know but if you could be smart and and you save up your money a little bit you could at least have something to show for it. and I, right now this house is the best thing i got to show for yeah too, uh, the best thing you got is the fact that you're gonna be the champion of the world like real yeah soon. <laughs> yes sir yes sir uh, yes sir and, and you're smart and you're good looking and you're nice so yeah his his dad had four moms growing up in africa uh, his dad but, had four moms. I mean, I mean, four, I mean, four wives. Four wives. <laughs> dad had four wives. He, he had four moms. But but it didn't. It, but he told us it's not, it's not as good as it sounds. They, they didn't sleep in the same bed. They each had their own room. Like it wasn't like. That's he perfect. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, it's, he, it's, one, it's one of those things too where like I'm 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 the second to the youngest. So like a lot of things went over my head until I started getting a little bit older and I'll go back to the visit and I start hearing the fucking jokes, man. I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to think about this shit, man. And like, I think about like, oh, who's getting tonight? Who's getting Tuesday? Who's getting Wednesday? Like, man, get I'm not trying to think about this. So, Dick, I feel for you because you're like, you're a black man that's a driver around America, but you have a Muslim name. You have to fly. Yes. Like you must get stopped constantly both places. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's strange, you know, it, and it, it's been to my benefit too. Like back before I got to the UFC, um, I fought in Jordan one time, and oh, they God. I was fighting one of like Conor McGregor's little proteges. It was like um the SBG guy. They was bringing me in there to lose, but when I got there, they didn't realize like oh Sadiq Yusuf is a pretty good name for for the Muslim crowd, and like over there they was going crazy for me. They, I don't know what they were expecting to come out when they heard the name Sadiq Yusuf. <laughs> I don't know if they were expecting me to look like how I look, but when 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 they announced my name, the whole crowd was going insane. It was like Sadiq, 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 you sir. Like man, it, it was it was pretty dope. Were you wearing like a robe? Did you come out like in a robe and a whole thing? Like, that would be if you had like a you like. A- nah, I, I was I wasn't prepared either. You know, if I if I thought thought about it a little bit better, I could have pandered to the audience. <laughs> have like a magic Great. carpet. You had like four people like carry you out like on a carpet or something. You know, like you kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I seen back in the day. Uh, well, yeah, so- we'll, we'll keep we'll keep going until, until I pass the line to where I I'm now now I was offensive. Yeah, of <laughs> now listen, I um I bought your T-shirt and I love your shirt, but it's you on the back. I want everyone to see you in the front because I I, couldn't, I had to find a mirror to take a picture. Can I get a shirt with you on the front? There's there's a couple. I think if you if you if you look on the website, there's somewhere it's on the front. There's somewhere it's on the back. There's somewhere it's like double. You just gotta oh. not be a lazy bastard. I gotta I gotta buy another to one. Now. Now I gotta get two. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta just click the button to flip the thing, to flip the shirt the other way. I got it. I'm ready to wear it. I'm like fuck. No gonna, and then I'm gonna make a picture. I'm like. This is you. Oh, he's really black. You can't see him. It was a black shirt. Like that's just, the- <laughs> you. You had to take one more step. You saw how you moved to the right and clicked. Okay, you were yeah. supposed to like stay there and click, flip around. And I'm a see busy guy, dude. Phone. I'm a busy guy because I I wanted to like post a picture. I'm like I gotta do it like like a fucking asshole. Like look at my ass. Like like Tony Yusef. Like it was the gayest picture I ever fucking seen. All right, I'm gonna get another one. Uh, and by the way, I, I didn't get it for free. I ordered it. I didn't even tell you I ordered it. So I got to support my guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. I'm surprised you found that. That's like, that was like, a, that's one of my, my old, old pictures. I, I don't think I was in the UFC when I, when I had that shirt. So uh, that, that's pretty dope. Yeah, well, I'm going to get a new one where you can see the front now. So I'm taking take an ass shot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Get, get one like these. I, 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 got, I got this one now. You can get one like that. All right. I'll get, I'll get yeah. one like that. All right, uh, where can people, if I, if I want to buy a Sadiq Yusuf shirt, where can I get it? It's all in my, every one of my social medias, I have the link trees in my bio. So you could just click on the link tree and you'll see to buy my merch. It's all, I think I do it to like represented.com. So like any one of my social media, just click the link in my bio and you can find my shirts. 
You can find like shirts, the cameos, YouTube, um, Twitch, all that stuff is on there. Cool. Well, thank oh, oh yeah, and, and and you can find um my mom's clothing store. That's what I've been helping her with. Nice. The most, you know? nice. So you can find you can find that on there too. She she's been really grinding. I'm trying to get her out of the um the work life. Just help her work for herself. So that that's a that's a really big thing. I'm really proud of her with. That's awesome. Now, what kind of clothes does she sell? All African clothes. It's all um like handmade African attire. My sister actually makes them back home, and she s- sends them here to my mom. My sister makes a couple of them. Some of them, like she um she gets other people to make, and she sends them here, and we sell them. Now, if I get it for my wife and my daughter, are they gonna get called? Nah, nah. That's a great question. I I just told my mom honestly, we need to get some white models on the website so people don't think they're gonna get killed for wearing it. You know. So, okay. So, good. You could be you could be our first white model. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Anything for a three year old? Uh, I, I'm not sure she has the kid stuff up yet, but she has them in person. I'm gonna ask her. But on the website, she has all things for like adults and stuff. Okay, I will hundred percent. My daughter will be your first model wearing African colors. That would be hilarious. Uh, yeah, yeah. That would, that would, <laughs> <laughs> she got canceled at three. Fuck I got, I got, I got a teammate. His name's Troy. He, he's like, like super white. Like we have a joke on our team where there's a conversation between him and James Vick for who's a more country ass white boy. Oh, oh, James Vick. And he's been telling me, he's been telling me forever that his. I suppose. So in my, my mind, I'm like, who could give birth to to this country as white boy Troy, you know? So he finally <laughs> came through and bought some clothes for his dad. <laughs> he bought some clothes for his dad. And he's like, all right, I'm going to send you a picture of my dad wearing the clothes. And he sends me the picture and his dad's a black dude. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was oh, like, that's I, never, hilarious. I, guess, I guess it's his stepdad or oh. or maybe like he's adopted, but he always just addresses him as dad. So I never asked any questions. <laughs> but I was I was just waiting to see like the most hillbilly ass dude <laughs> in my mom's African clothes. White boy Troy. Troy has a black dad. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, listen, Sadiq, man, you're awesome. I'll always support you. Always be your friend. And uh, thank you for coming on the show, man. Yeah, no, no worries. No worries. I almost, I almost couldn't make it at first. You told me it was 12. I, I thought she was like in New York or something. I guess no, both PS, PST is California time. That's Pacific Standard Time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, take care, brother. Congrats on the house and everything else. Yes, yeah. sir. Have a nice one. Thanks, man. Nice to meet you, man. Nice guy. Yeah, he's great. Where is he living now? Is he still living in Maryland? He lives in Maryland, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's hilarious, right? He's hilarious. He's got a great personality. Yeah. He took his wife and his brother in or sister in or something? His mom. His mom it's and his brother. That's bro- mensch. His yeah, mom, yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His mom and his brother. And he's just, he's just a good guy. Were you confused else in Texas or no? I thought he was in Texas. <laughs> For some reason, I, I, I had him training it in Texas with like, uh, just in Texas for some reason. I don't know why. I, I just, I have no idea why I thought he was from Texas. Uh, or a train. I know, I knew he was living in Maryland. He was living, moved to Texas for some reason. Anyway, uh, that is our show today. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, thank you. thank you, Sadiq. Thank you, John Dotson. I'll talk to you soon, brother. Be good. All right. Bye bye.